Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to our first video for Computex 2019, and it's definitely a good one. There's been a ton of anticipation, leaks, and hype over what hardware AMD would share with us at their press conference keynote, and let's just say they did not disappoint. But firstly, a thanks to MSI for sponsoring our trip to Computex 2019. You can check out their latest AMD X570 motherboards for gamers and creators via the link in the description. So let's start off with some official announcements on their Navi Radeon GPUs. Here AMD said that they're building on the new GPU architecture and compute unit design which they're calling RDNA. A big focus here for AMD was the significant improvement in IPC or instructions per clock over last generation and supposedly a new multi-level cache hierarchy. In summary AMD said that we can expect a 25% bump in IPC which is quite significant and a huge 50% improvement in performance per watt. So the first Navi GPU family goes under the name of R. RX 5000. This was to commemorate their 50th year anniversary, but of course the naming RX 5000 directly blocks the RTX 2000 series from Nvidia, but we're pretty used to this back and forth naming at this point. The RX 5000 GPUs will also be the first GPUs to be PCIe 4.0 ready, but more on this later. In terms of specific models, we didn't get too much info, but we did get a peek of a close competitor to Nvidia's RTX 2070. A single demo was shown on stage, which was Strange Brigade, and this was most likely running the Vulcan AP which as we know is insanely AMD favoring and here the RX 5700 showed a 10% improvement in frame rate so in your DX11 and DX12 titles we can probably expect the RX 5700 to be slightly below the RTX 2070 but this is pure speculation and guesswork based off of a single demo so there's not much to show for Navi at the moment except that we do have an RTX 2070 potential competitor named the RX 5700 AMD will be announcing more details over at E3 on June 10th so definitely stay Stay tuned for that. Now let's get into the real stuff from this keynote, which was the announcement of three new third gen Ryzen CPUs, the 3700X, 3800X, and 3900X. These are all running on the new seven nanometer Zen 2 core, which are PCIe 4.0 capable as we expected, but we didn't expect just how well they would perform against the competing CPUs from Intel. So across the Zen 2 family, AMD said that we can expect a 2X improvement in cache size, which improves memory latency for gaming. That's big news. 2X performance in floating point computation and a 15% uplift in IPC. So clock for clock, core for core, a 7 nanometer Ryzen 3 CPU should be around 15% faster than a second gen Ryzen CPU. Of course though, they're not the same clock speeds and core counts as last gen. So let's take a look at the three CPUs that were introduced. First up is the Ryzen 3700X, which succeeds the 2700X. It's an eight core 16 thread CPU with a boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz, 36 megabytes of total cache, and my favorite spec, just a 65 watt TDP. That's 40 watts lower than the 2700X, meaning that it's both faster and should run significantly cooler. Now what we all want to know is how these new CPUs compare to the competition, and in this case we're looking at Intel's 9700K in a side-by-side -side comparison in Cinebench R20. Of course we don't know the memory speeds or power limitations on either of these CPUs, so it's recommended to take these results with a grain of salt. In saying that, these results do look to be extremely promising. In this demo, the 3700X was said to be over 30% faster in rendering than the 9700K. And, uh, uh, our competitor is still going. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, take care of, uh, Stepping it up a notch, we have the 3800X. So essentially this is a higher clocked 3700X. So similar to what we've seen with the first gen 1700X and the 1800X. The TDP here is slightly higher at 105 watts at the same core count and total cache size. The boost clock speed is listed at 4.5 gigahertz. And keep in mind, this is usually the max single core boost clock. The total core boost clock will have to of course wait for the full review. Now Intel's 9900K is currently the best of the best when it comes to a consumer socket desktop top CPU, and in gaming the 3800X was shown to be able to match that with a quick walking benchmark of PUBG. Again, it's likely that the 9900K is being restricted to its 95 watt TDP. Memory speeds are uncertain between them as well, but at the very least the demo was running north of 140 FPS. High frame rate gaming is usually where AMD falls behind to Intel and is one of the reasons I personally use an Intel CPU for gaming, so it'll definitely be great to see AMD make some significant gains here. Now onto the beast of the show the one that everyone was waiting for, the Ryzen 3900X, the first Ryzen 9 processor to be released and boasting a massive 12 cores and 24 threads. Yep, 12 cores on the AM4 platform, this is going to be mental and I absolutely cannot wait. The 
4900X spec lists a 4.6 GHz boost clock, a whopping 70 MB of total cache, and a supposed 105 Watt TDP. The demo here was pretty convincing, running a render in Blender against Intel's 9920X, which is also a 12 core CPU, but significantly more expensive as we'll soon see. And the 3900X was shown to be significantly faster. So it's faster, cheaper, should run significantly cooler, and it runs on a consumer level chipset. Pricing was confirmed on stage for these CPUs to be at 329, 399, and 499 US dollars respectively for the 3700X, 3800X, and 3900X. Overall, that does seem pretty reasonable and falls in line with their current lineup. Given the supposed gains in gaming though, I'm sure we would all have loved to see where the six core 12 threaded parts would fall in terms of price to performance. So hopefully we can get some more announcements on those parts before the launch date, which will be July 7th. PCIe 4.0 also got a demo on stage, although it was just a synthetic benchmark. I'm really looking forward to testing the improvements versus 3.0 in actual usable workloads when these new CPUs finally release. So 12 cores and PCIe 4.0 on the AM4 platform is definitely exciting. And for this, we can expect the new X570 motherboards to be reworked with improved VRM design and cooling. As the doors open up to Computex tomorrow, that's what we'll be taking a look at first. So as always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.